Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And here we're taking a look at the Galaxy S9 versus the Galaxy S8. Now, one quick perspective here. The Galaxy S7 is still used by a lot of users out there, and they're quite happy with it. So what we're looking at here is basically the top two in a very high-powered line of smartphones. Much of the outside might seem the same, but improvements have been made that make the S9 a worthy step away from the S8. Colors now have a new addition in the Lilac Purple Edition, which is a purple hue that we actually surprisingly enjoyed very much. The size of the phones are basically the same whether you go for the plus sizes or for the smaller, regular editions, and they are all backed by IP68 certifications. Hardly anything has really changed between these two, but those couple of pain points that people had in the previous edition have been addressed here. The speaker grill on the bottom is no longer a series of dots, which seems like a small detail, but then you realize that it is one of two speakers. There is a speaker on the front, integrated into the call speaker, and now you have a stereo setup. Really, this makes the sound experience much louder and much fuller, a very marked improvement over the original Galaxy S8. The other change is probably going to be a welcome one for a lot of people out there, and it's the fingerprint reader. On the Galaxy Note 8 and on the Galaxy S8, it was a pain point that Samsung addressed by putting the fingerprint reader below the camera module, so it is lower on the body and easier to reach with your index finger. This is a great move on their part, even if it is clear that Samsung is moving towards other biometric meters, like scanning your face or scanning your iris. Both of those have been put together into what is now called the intelligent scan. And this is where things get really exciting. While the f1.7 aperture camera of the Galaxy S8 was already a great performer, we now have one that is capable of f1.5 and f2.4. That's right, you can change the aperture and it is done mechanically. An actual iris will close and open to the levels of f1.5 and f2.4, meaning that depending on the situation, you'll get a lot more light and a lot more depth of field. Samsung still manages to find ways of improving on the camera experience, whereas in the Galaxy S8, we all pretty much agree that it was a pretty great camera on its own already. And that also comes down to their better image processing. Even the camera app is a little bit different this time around with all of the modes up top. There are a couple of modes that we did highlight in a camera feature focus video that include the AR emoji, which is basically like Bitmoji, but you can actually cater it to your liking. And there's also the super slow-mo that allows for 960 frame per second video at 720p resolution, but there is an auto mode that figures out when the motion is happening, taking the guesswork out of slow motion. Really, the camera is a lot of the story with the Galaxy S9, as it does improve also Bixby's assistance. Of course, the Bixby button is on the side still, and any improvements that are made to Bixby on the Galaxy S9 will likely come in software updates for the Galaxy S8 as well. But the camera in Bixby in the S9 does provide things like live translation and also food recognition. But aside from all of that excitement, much of the experience is still reliable and very speedy. You get the bump up in performance you would expect with the Snapdragon 845 in the Galaxy S9. And the Galaxy S9 Plus brings an extra 2GB of RAM, rounding it out to 6GB total, which is definitely a bit more of an upgrade compared to the original S8 Plus. The screens are AMOLED and come in the same sizes, 5.8 and 6.2 inches. And one thing we notice about the screen with the new Galaxy S9s is that it doesn't seem like the display is actually bleeding all the way to the ends anymore. And finally, in battery sizes, Samsung kept things about the same. The Galaxy S9 comes with the same 3000 mAh capacity, while the Plus model comes with 3500. And so there you have it, the changes between the Galaxy S9 and the previous generation. There isn't a whole lot differentiating these two phones, and if you have the Galaxy S8, you might want to stick with it. One good thing is that if you do have a previous Galaxy device, especially the Galaxy S8, then you have the ability to trade in the old phone for a deep discount on the new one, which can be pre-ordered on March 2nd. Keep it tuned to Android Authority for more coverage on the Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus. We have plenty to talk about with this. And don't forget to check out the camera feature focus feature uh, so that you can get a closer look at these camera features that Samsung did add into their newest device. Keep it tuned here for more from Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. And remember to stick around because we are your source for all things Android.